Hey guys, welcome to Low Desert Love. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about growing a garden with a toddler and some things I do to help my toddler make the connection between the plants in the ground and us and why, why we grow the things we grow. So maintaining a garden with a toddler can be tricky or young kids in general. A lot of times they haven't quite made that connection between plants being a living thing in the ground and we need to help them stay being living things in the ground. The first time we put in anything back here that was trying to grow, uh, he had a heck of a time um, leaving them where they were. He wanted to pull them up because he wanted to see what they were, you know, he's, he's learning. And while it's great for him to be curious and want to know what's happening, um, he killed two moringa trees and a couple other things. So, to help him with what the plants were, why they needed to stay where they were, how to keep them from being plucked from their home, we, we talked, we worked with him, we explained to him, the ground is their home, this is where they live, we need to feed them and water them. They're pretty, they smell good. And that worked for a while, um, especially with flowers. He's really good about smelling the flowers, being gentle with the flowers. And, and now, <laughs> he's so funny, he will, we have nasturtiums and calendula in bloom right now. So he will take, uh, he'll, He'll pick a flower and he'll sniff it and it's pretty and he'll he'll play with it and he'll give it to his dinosaurs and when he's done with it he takes that flower and he replants it somewhere in the garden because to a degree i mean he's two and a half he understands that that is their home and that is where they grow and it's adorable now that doesn't really work for for veggies right so what I have started doing, and I started this last season, and it has helped really well. Uh, when we had squashes in the ground, like pumpkins, I printed off little pictures, like this one, of what the plant was, what it was going to fruit and produce, and I planted it, stuck it in the ground with the plant. When Halloween time came around, and we got you know the little baby pumpkins that are like yay big, he saw it on the counter, he picked it up, and he brought it out to the garden, and he found the spot in the garden where the pumpkin label was, and he put that pumpkin in the ground where it belonged. And I thought, yes, he gets it. He almost gets it, to the point that a, a two-year-old can get it. So, it's now summer season, spring season. It's been 100 all week. I feel like we missed spring completely. We just skipped right over it. I've done the same thing with the tomatoes so far, and I'm going to do it with almost everything out there. Um, this one, this is my pink jazz tomato. I've got this guy right here. That's my sweet 100. This is the plant that overwintered and is still rocking. And of course, the gorgeous Brad's Atomic Grape. Now, I lay these, right now they're laid out in the garden, just underneath the tomato plants, because I don't have the trellises up yet, but when the trellises go up, I'll hang these on the trellis. This serves multiple purposes. One, I don't have to constantly try and remember which plant is which. This, I, the plants are gonna get big, the garden's gonna get bushy, and I'm not gonna be able to see the markers in the ground that are this big. So this helps me. On the back of these pictures, I have facts about them that help me during the growing season. How big they're supposed to be, when I should cut them, days to maturity, suggested dates I should be looking for, stuff like that. And then if anyone's here and looking at my garden or I'm showing them, give I don't wanna say giving tours because nobody comes over to tour anything of mine. <laughs> But when people look at my stuff, I can be like, hey, this is what it is, this is what we're looking for, some facts about it. And it, it helps, it's interesting. It helps my child know 
These plants are gonna produce food, which he hasn't eaten off of them yet, but fingers crossed, we can nail that one down this year. I'm gonna do the same thing for the peppers. The ground cherries, the beans. I'm gonna try and do it for most of the things in the garden. But that is how I help my child connect. These plants are going to produce food for us and we need to take care of them. And so far, it seems to be working. If you have any other tips and tricks for gardening with kids, leave them in the comments. I'm always curious to know. This is my first time gardening with a child. This is my first time successfully gardening in general. If you have any tips for keeping my cats out of the garden, I'll take that one too because, oh my gosh, the wood chips don't deter the cats at all. Where are they? They haven't snuck into the shot yet. I hope this idea helped you and I hope you have success gardening with your little ones. Thanks for hanging out today and remember if you aim to thrive at the very least you'll survive.